Hey everybody, we're here to kick off a panel with Michelle McKenna from the NFL and Sam Path from Verizon. So welcome, Michelle. Welcome, Sam Path. Let's start with, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle McKenna. I am the Chief Information Officer here at the National Football League. And I'm responsible for all the league's uh, technology activities, the shared service delivery, including uh, game day technology as well. Great, thank you. And Sam Path. Hi, my name is Sam Path. I'm the president of Global Enterprise here at Verizon. And I am super lucky to serve, I would say the top 10,000 of our largest customers globally. Thank you. So Michelle, let's start with you. We're rolling off of the NFL kickoff. So tell us what went on and, and what you had to do to prepare to get not just the NFL kicked off, but also fans back in the stands. We had to do quite a bit. I mean, going back to actually getting the season off the ground with a virtual draft to working on getting training camp, getting our players there safely, um, monitoring and measuring and tra tracing and tracking uh, just to make sure they're all very healthy, uh, led up to a, a great kickoff and a great kickoff to our season. A lot of protocols had to be followed a lot of them were technology-based, many of them um, administrative-based, uh, but it took a, a Herculean effort by our clubs, uh, stadium operators, uh, and the like uh, to get the stadiums open first last night in Kansas City, and then this Sunday in a bunch more all across the weekend. So uh, some stadiums will have fans, some won't, um, and uh, we're gonna be fluid as we go through this uh, season. And, you know, we just, you know, look, medical is leading the way for us and we're enabling everything along the way and um, our fans and our players and our coaches and employees, we all share in the responsibility of, of making sure we keep each other safe during this time. That's great. And one, of the, one of the things that was highlighted uh, in the kickoff was certainly the, the technology, the, the bands the players were wearing. So they did a, a brief cameo on that. Just give us some color on that as well. Yeah, no, that was really a, you know, one of those uh, IT adrenaline moments when uh, you you realize that you're going to need a way to uh, trace and make sure if people have been in close contact with each other that we know it instantly and uh, not wait for sort of the more manual contact tracing that exists really in public health organizations. But we also had to balance that with the privacy of our players. Uh, it had to be negotiated and partnered with our um Players Association and our collective bargaining agreement with them. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of negotiation that went along. And I had about three weeks to find a solution, um, scoured the co uh, country, found out had to leave the US, uh, found a company in Germany. Uh, all of a sudden I placed the largest order the company had ever received for devices when I asked for 10,000 devices in two weeks. Hmm. It challenged their supply chain. Um, I had to uh, beg and get it taken from uh, some other clients to get us there and get us open and operating. But they're basically proximity recording devices and they record the distance between two people who are wearing the device. And it will help us very quickly know, uh, know who had had contact with someone and for how long, which not only helps us trace really quickly if we get a positive test, but it's also teaching uh, our players and coaches and staff on how to stay socially distant during this time um, and when they're in the facilities and even when they're in the game. Yeah, I found that interesting when we talked about that, that it's a teaching moment. It, it's showing people really how close in proximity they are for what period of time. And I found that fascinating. So Sam Path, uh, in terms of your preparation for the game, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, but you also have some other things that you were doing to support the NFL and, and jointly what Verizon's offering out into the marketplace with the NFL. Yeah, Michelle, congratulations. I think my, both my kids could use with their proximity device as well. <laughs> uh, it's a teaching moment for them. You know, they started school this week. Uh, no, look, first of all, we've been busy getting the network ready for game day. Uh, I think, you know, these, these days tend to be one of our largest network days. So ensuring that the network is ready. Look, the network has been running a little hot because of COVID in general, because people are streaming more data, people are working from home a lot more. So 
consumption patterns have changed pretty drastically. So step one is get the network ready. We had a great day. The network's running nice. We feel good about it. So that's step one. Look, once we get into that, you know, one of the big things we decided to invest on is co-viewing. Typically, people would get with each other, meet in people's home, order food, order some pizzas and watch the game. That's not possible anymore. So one of the things we launched was the co- Yahoo NFL co-viewing app where three, four people can get on, multiple people can get on with video cams, look at each other and then watch the game together and, and all the trash talk that goes with it. Uh, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty awesome. You know, it's been well received. We've been trialing it for a while. Uh, a great, 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 great uh, app. You know, another one is just our uh, Yahoo Sports AR. You know, and the game center experience is just a lot better with some augmented reality pieces. Look, part of this is uh, getting the network ready, getting uh, our fans access to the screens as they work, either through our FiOS TV or through our over-the-top app with the NFL and Yahoo. Yeah, and Sam Path, any fun facts there in terms of you said the network, it's there's been a lot more stress or, or whatnot on the network. It's been running hot. Do you have any color on that? No, look, look uh, you know, I'll tell you a side fact. You know, typically Mother's Day tends to be our biggest voice day. You wow. know, everyone calls their mothers, they have long chats. As COVID has worked through, almost every day has been Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, you know, and voice has become the killer app for us. So we didn't ever think in 2020 voice would be the killer app. So, you know, what's all this new again? And it works great, sir. Sam Path, uh, as a global organization with global reach, uh, you know, we're talking about the network having a lot more stress on it, a lot running hotter. What are you seeing around the world? What are some of the the primary initiatives that you're driving and your organization's driving? The first for us has been just employee safety. You know, we have 120,000 plus employees. So step one for us is get them safe. So as soon as COVID hit, we moved to a work from home location. Uh, it worked very well. You know, a lot of internal processes have changed. You know, I say there are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. I feel like these were the weeks when decade happens, you know, in terms of policy changing, a lot of digital initiatives. There are three big things I thought that we did well. Uh, the first is enabling work from home. You know, anywhere from 30 to 50 million Americans uh, decided to work from home, voluntarily or involuntarily. And it changed network patterns overnight. Because typically you do all your work in the office, you come home and of course you surf and do different types of network consumption. So in getting ready for that, you know, we have a lot more security surface to cover. So secure network, secure connectivity, you know, ensuring that some you know, a mom or dad's uh, office work gets prioritized over their kids Minecraft. You know, those are things that do take some time. It does take a while. In my house, it doesn't work. Minecraft still takes uh, precedent over my work. So just enabling work from home has been huge for us. The second one has been education, you know, remote education. You know, suddenly you have kids all, uh, you know, doing remote education, trying to work from home. So we've through the Verizon, you know, uh, national distance learning initiative, We've enabled, I think in 40 states, almost 38 million kids to have access, you know, network access, device access, so that they can learn remotely. This this church wasn't built for Easter, you know? Uh, So as a result, suddenly it did. And as a result, we had to set up a lot of infrastructure to get them there. You know, kids are going to learn through it. As the fall comes in, many of the schools come, they're going to have to learn. Though I have to admit, our gaming traffic is at an all time high. So my sign of learning is when that gaming traffic goes down is that's when I know remote education is actually working. Uh, The third one is uh, telehealth. Uh, Now, I got to tell you, uh, you know, since the 60s, uh, the patient doctor process has kind of remained the same. You call in, someone gives you an appointment, you go, you wait in a, you know, you wait in a room, you chit chat, you watch, uh, you know, C-SPAN on TV and the doctor goes and sees you and then you come out. The process hasn't fundamentally changed. Uh, telehealth has, fi- I mean, telehealth has been there forever. You know, finally, I would say, you know, in the last uh, three, four months, it's become real for us. You know, we have Blue Jeans, which is one of the most secure video conferencing platforms. Uh, we've done a lot of work enabling virtual visits to hospitals because hospitals have stopped visitors from coming. So you have cameras in rooms, people can see that, you know, their friends, their colleagues, their relatives. Second is telehealth visits. And one of the things we notice is customer satisfaction is actually higher on telehealth than in, in person. And also completion rates tend to be much higher. So look, these are three things that we never thought we were going to do 
uh, six months ago, but now it's become big for us and we are leaning in big time on that. So people are admitting that they don't like going to the doctors. They prefer to communicate via the medium. Do you think that's something that, uh, you know, COVID has really forced this into our medium or into our lives or accelerated what was already happening? Is this something that you think changes forever? I think so. Look, you know, a lot of these technologies have always been there, you know, but everyone seems to have a problem, legal, regulatory, you know, it's a department of no's everywhere, you know, it didn't work. Suddenly as COVID works, everyone seems to have turned to yes there. So uh, part of it is just a lot of the internal processes have changed, you know, across uh, the country. So I think that's one. Two is there's a definite customer behavior that has changed. You know, uh, e-commerce is definitely one. You know, the amount of people buying groceries and other things online. Second is telehealth. Uh, I think education requires a lot more work. The experience is still a little gawpy. Uh, you know, it's like taking existing content and repurposing it for remote education doesn't really work well. We've got more work to do. But I think on telehealth and e-commerce are two things that fundamentally customer behavior has changed and I don't see things going back. Yeah, and maybe, you know, as we, we think about that, Michelle, uh, you also have another role. You don't just run helping uh, the organizations get back on the field and, and back to football and operations, but you also have uh, the distinguished duty of, of being the CIO. So you have to manage the IT infrastructure for the corporation uh, that make up the NFL. So tell us about how you've dealt with that and how your organization's dealt with the transition. You know, just as uh, Sampath just said, I think um, you know what normally would have taken a long time to adapt to change. There was quite a big uh, who moved my cheese moment when we decided to uh, do a draft that was remote and all of a sudden everyone had to work from home. No one was comfortable with it. What I can say is that our IT team had been prepared for this for some time because we did have a remote workforce. We have a lot of people that are on the road all the time, um, but not everyone had done it. Um, and certainly it wasn't part of our culture. Our culture is a very traditional, old school face-to-face -face culture, certainly in the coaching and the club ranks, but also here at the league office. So initially the biggest change was just shifting the culture and shifting the fact that we could all be productive and be at home and figure out how, uh, you know, to get people comfortable with that. Um, I do think though, the work-life balance thing has been really challenging. It has gotten to the point where we have no barrier between our home life, personal life, and our work life. So while I am so happy we were prepared for it and I'm happy that we were able to work through it, um, I do think there is a push to have some return to normalcy back in the office for some periods of time, as long as we're safe about it, just so that people can begin to maybe have a little better mental health around separating their work and their home life. I know personally, that was one of my uh, biggest challenges. So that, you know, that is just, you know, the technology works um, and we're so happy that it does. And it's now becoming more of a cultural issue um, versus a technology issue, which is, which is really interesting to, to have it come full circle in such a short period of time. Right. And you're, you're broadcasting to us and joining us from your office on Park Avenue in New York City. What was it like today getting into, into work from your home? We've had people coming in uh, now in different waves. Um, and we have a, uh, a, a detailed questionnaire that everyone fills out every day and it generates a um, QR code that allows us to enter the building based upon our temperature and based upon a screening. We're also doing testing um, for our employees and uh, that is also helping. And we have very strict uh, social, distancing, social distancing and um, PPE. So if I we're sitting in a cubicle, um, I would be uh, wearing uh, this um, while I'm working, but I am in my own office, so I don't have to wear it. Um, but when I go your, out- Complete with your own branding. Yes, complete with our own. Of course, we put our shield on everything. And from New Era, another great uh, partner. So um, yeah, we when we leave the office or when I walk out of the office, I have the mask on at all times. So a lot has changed. 
Um, but it is starting to feel a little bit more normal um, and seeing people in the hallways and, and being able to uh, chat briefly. We're also uh, going to be wearing those Connexon devices, which those devices will warn us when we have been in close contact for longer than 15 minutes um, so that we move on and that you don't end up exposing yourself. So I think a combination of testing uh, tracing and then of course just good hygiene and wearing your uh, PPE is how we're going to get back to the office. Yeah and and Sam Path had asked the same thing to you you know large organization how are you you know what's what's the protocol with Verizon getting people back in the office what's the plan and, and outlook? You know I, my whole life I've, I have always complained about my commute uh, you know, and now this 10 step commute or my 12 step commute from the bedroom to the little home office. I got to tell you, I'm still complaining about it. You know? <laughs> uh, to, to Michelle's point, you know, you come in at odd hours, you know, it's not rare, you know, at like 4.30 in the morning, I'm here or at like 7, 9 p.m. in the evening, I'm little in this little office here. So I, I, I do think uh, uh, burnout, stress, uh, just working constantly has gone up across the teams. Another thing I've seen is people are not taking vacation because when I want vacation, I want to go to Cabo, I want to go to Bermuda, you know, necessarily I don't want to stay. Staycation is a little not that hot anymore. So I, I, I do think we're seeing vacations come down. So people are a little burnout. So we're being a little careful. Uh, coming back to your question, uh, look, we have, uh, we have field teams, you know, teams that go to customer premises, install equipment, you know, uh, the NFL offices or the extreme offices, you know, set up circuits. Uh, those teams have been very careful. You know, a lot of PPE, a lot of protocols being followed for the most part. They've done a phenomenal job. Then we have large uh, center-based resources, call centers, agents, collection agents. Uh, many of them have worked from home. In fact, in some of, in one of our consumer businesses, we've moved permanently work from home for those resources. So we shut down a large number of call centers and move resources to work from home. Uh, and it's where performance management is relatively straightforward. Uh, you know, it's a P times Q business. You can track the performance very well. Remote works quite nicely. In some of the staff functions, uh, you know, it's not that straightforward. So we're going to work through what functions need to be in a hybrid mode where a couple of days people come and work, then they work remotely from home. Uh, we are being flexible. We are being agile. We are working through it, uh, but right now, uh, you know, bulk of our resources are uh, working remotely. And I anticipate between now and the end of the year, we'll get more clarity on, you know, how our long-term plans for that uh, play out. How do you think that impacts your, your uh, call it your corporate footprint in real estate? Does it, does it impact it negatively or how does it impact it? You know, we are one of the largest, we have one of the largest corporate real estate footprints in, in, in the country, just given our network as well as our office, the administrative offices. Uh, we, we don't know exactly. I think we're going to have to see how this plays out because there are a couple of scenarios. One is, you know, I work one or two days from home, but then I come into the office two days a week. We're still going to have to keep those resources. So I, I think right now we're going to have to figure out where they are. Look, our network resources, which is a bulk of our resources, those will always remain you know, what we call central offices, our POPs, our VRAN hubs, our CRAN hubs, those will remain, no question. It's only the admin offices we are talking about. So I think, you know, oh, sometime between now and next year, we'll get a better sense for what we do. But one of the things we are being careful of is uh, collaboration remotely is not easy. You know, things that have already started, it's good. It's not difficult to continue where the processes are in place. But two things we are having to solve for one is how do you launch new projects, new projects, new products where we are having to break glass, break some eggshells, work through it. That's one. Second is onboarding new resources. You know, if I've been in the company for a while, I know people, I know who to call, when to call. Uh, but if I'm brand new in the company and I'm working out of my basement, it's quite an isolating experience. Uh, so those are two scenarios we are really spending time. Now look, we've tried very hard to make onboarding really smooth, but you know, at the end of the day, you want to meet people, have that connection. You know, there's that human connection, which uh, fully, I don't think technology has solved that. Yeah, it's going to be a gap, right? You start to see productivity separation uh, because there's value in, in collaboration. And 
and it's different depending on what role you're playing and, and what your, your lifestyle is. And I think, um, like Michelle was saying, a lot of people in the NFL are on the road all the time. So for them, it's it may be just continuity of, of their role, but for other people that need to be in a facility working together uh, to collaborate, to create a production or create a new product or an offering, you have to do that. So, hey, Michelle, as you, you think about the last six months, last seven months, uh, you know, what are some of the lessons learned and, and what do you think the outlook is for the future? You know, let, just to build on what he just said about, um, you know, needing to collaborate and, and certainly ideate and innovate and how that is, is harder remotely. Um, I can say one thing that I found to be uh, a positive and I hope it always continues, is when we had to really pivot and put the draft on, we had to come up with a solution that did not exist prior. Uh, we had no solution for it. And ESPN actually said to us that they didn't think it could be done. And what we did were a bunch of these video calls where everybody's box in the video is the same size. And there was just something fundamental about equality and not hierarchy that had really good ideas surface to the top more quickly than they normally would have. In a typical bureaucracy type environment where you've got tiers and layers, I would not have heard ideas from some of the junior staff. First of all, they wouldn't have felt as comfortable speaking up in a conference room, um, but they would on a Zoom call. They would also be willing to put a chat in so I think one of the learnings is make sure you get ideas from everywhere in the company, no matter what the level. And I think this Zoom business has, or video teleconferencing in general, has really given an equality to all ideas. And I hope that continues. I know I certainly will be kicking off a lot of new innovative projects this way. Um, secondly, I think just looking and being flexible um, if we've learned anything in the last few months, it's been make a plan and then have about 10 backup plans. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have to implement all 10 backups, but you're going to need to have them. And, you know, I think I drove a lot of people crazy with the contingency planning during all of this. But um, that is one thing that you cannot do enough of when you have such an unknown environment is being able to know ahead of time what your standard operating procedure is going to be if certain things happen. So we've thought all that out. We've got very detailed run books around what will happen if a certain thing happens during the season and how the decisions will get made. And all of that came from really good, you know, pulling together um, teamwork and just being able to be flexible, fluid. Um, and then finally, I think the biggest thing of all is when you're in an environment like this is you have to learn to trust each other, which isn't always easy in corporate America. And it's certainly not easy in a world where people compete every day for turf and things. Not that we do that in the NFL, but uh, <laughs> I've heard it happens. Um, it is, um, it's, it's important that you give people the benefit of the doubt. We're running a thousand miles an hour. We can't remember to communicate everything we're missing out on some things, but organize your work, get standing work calls and check-ins, and then work really hard to trust each other and let the technology be the enabler, but um, not not lose that human, you know, that human interaction and human contact. Oh, that's, that's great. And, you know, what you said too is the equalizer in terms of getting ideas and collaboration, and that's something we have to carry forward using this medium and I you know I couldn't agree with you more um, just couldn't agree with you more so Sam Path pick up on that same uh, question what have you learned over the past several months and, and what do you think that means for the future I mean who was it who said plans are useless but planning is indispensable uh, you know as Michelle said have a plan and then have 10 backups most likely you're going to have to use the 11th backup so uh, you know that's uh, you know, par for the course uh, right now. Look, a couple of things, uh, you know, we see, uh, look, this uncertainty is going to continue till a vaccine is developed, a vaccine is deployed, and the vaccine actually works. I have absolutely no idea when that time is. And the more people I talk to, the more data I have, and the less information I have, which is fine. 
given the high level of uncertainty so i think we're going to have to plan for i'm saying anywhere from 6 months to 2 years of some level of uncertainty in our business so that's one given that i think two things one is we're going to have to be agile you know typically large companies like verizon we make a plan we stick to it and we ain't changing it we ain't changing it something unless something magnificently better happens we're going to have to change that so we're going to have to be a lot more agile about our policies in fact uh, there are a lot of policies which have were written 10 12 years ago i think now policy a lot of these will have to be changed you know pretty significantly second for us is uh, this also creates opportunities in the marketplace uh, new markets open up new places get captured and how do you go about that you know uh, digital is one and i mean and i mean digital i just don't mean the cloud digital in terms of processes in terms of being agile in terms of getting things done quickly uh, some companies made the investments and they're reaping it right now others haven't gone down that path so at least we see an opportunity to help other companies go down and ourselves as well look lastly you know as they say never let a crisis go to waste uh, because there's a worry once you do this when you get up from the end of this someone's going to move your cheese so you move it yourself uh, but look uh, we are quite fortunate you know financially we are a uh, balance sheet is very strong we are investing in fact uh, 5g look we bet the farm on 5g and we are actually going faster with 5g deployments post covid than pre covid uh we think there's an opportunity to you know get this technology faster we'll have 5g pretty much across the whole country by the end of this year a pretty big move for us so you know move fast and stay agile yeah we have to you know as we move forward into the new normal and and afterwards you know at the end of the day we all want people and we want to see those stands full we want it all be at that game we all want to have that live experience again and it's it's not too distant in the future but until then you know we keep driving with these principles and i also think like michelle was saying we have to remember where we were and what we've learned along the way and a quality innovation moving and being dynamic and i want to close it out and just say thank you to sam path representing verizon enterprise uh you've been a great partner to us customer partner and go to market friend and and we're very excited to continue to build on that and and help our customers and your customers our collective customers uh successfully navigate what's now and what's in the future and michelle thank you very much uh we're a proud partner of the NFL the official Wi-Fi provider Wi-Fi solutions provider of the NFL and analytics provider of the NFL so thank you both for being on this panel and uh thank stay you. safe thank you bye bye thank